Cheers, Brandon. And uh, MJ just dropped his phone. Hopefully that's all right. It wasn't, at least it wasn't your tablet this time. You cracked that last time you were at the races. Number three, Otto Lakin. Vicky, this is a horse that uh, last time out, he seemed to really like the underfoot conditions. He gets similar today, although, yes, a different race course. But the way the track's running today, these front-running tactics, we're just still holding thumbs, do it and hold on relentlessly. I think it's going to be a similar thing here for number three, Otto Lakin. I really like his chances today. He's a big, burly individual, and uh, I think he's just going to keep on galloping up front. I think you're right. He, he does it with um, great ease. He weighs in at 577 kilos today, an absolute beast of a horse. You see him walking around the ring. He's so well-conditioned. He, um, <laughs> as Grant was saying during the parade ring preview, beautiful shoulder, strong hand quarter. He, he really has all the muscle in the right places. Um, spot on, though. And then the conditions, also number three, Otto Luke, and he's um, got the pace, too. So I think that will suit him well. It's tricky. I've always found, Grant, the 1,800-meter um, race here, when they, when they get out the pens, I mean, look at that. Look at him cantering down. You couldn't ask for anything better if you were having a bit of a bet on the horse and going down like that, MJ. Yeah, definitely not. In this condition. Broadcasting live from the backstretch at Saratoga, this is the Handicapper report brought to you by capital otb bet.com the premier online wagering site in new york state capital otb bet.com sign up today and the clubhouse racebook 7-eleven central avenue albany make it to the clubhouse racebook Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Handicappers Board alongside Seth Barrow. I'm Anthony Mormino on Alabama Stakes Day, one of the great races in the United States, but one of the great races uh, in the world for three-year-old fillies. Uh, on the weather front, in the immortal words of Bob Weems, Seth, one time when fog rolled in at Monmouth Park, ladies and gentlemen, you're on your own. Uh, I don't know, and I'm not here to predict. Currently, it's nice, but... Anything could happen. Yeah. It has that type of feel. It I has mean, rained it already. It was raining. It looks like it could rain for six hours. It looks like it could thunderstorm. Over the horseshoe, it looks like you could get a suntan. Yeah, we'll keep our so, fingers crossed, certainly. Greatest game in the world played outdoors. 12.35 post time. 12 races. Torpedo Anna not here today. Uh, we'll get to the Alabama in a little bit, but I will foreshadow it that... Um, I looked at it for a long time. Uh, I know there's a seven to five shot in there, but I, I looked at Sandy it a long Duff, time. Uh, but but uh, the the uh, Miss Justify I think is talent wise right in the ballpark. I agree. So it was kind of between those two for me. Um, but but it, without Torpedo and out what C Candy did last time. I and I don't know if this word is but. correct, but the Alabama has become an, an anachronism. Ten furlongs on the dirt for fillies and mares is just not something we do in the United States. We don't do it for older filly or mares. Well, uh, and it's the same on the three-year-old boy side of things also. Um, you know, they don't run the mile and a quarter that often. Uh, I, I kind of like it. Right. Uh, I like that, you know, these gals get tested uh, at something of, yeah, an aberration. But we have in a the handful of ten furlong that, dirt races in America. For, yeah, and yeah. This seems to be the only uh, one for, for the disc yeah. staffers. But, but that, I like that. It kind of the outlier that tests them a little bit and maybe puts a little something special on their resume, perhaps. And uh, I was looking at the, you know, the list of winners from the uh, Alabama last night because I'll, I'll foreshadow this a little bit. Mike Veach is coming on on Racing Across America. We'll certainly talk Alabama with Mike, who's, I, I believe, working on a book on the history of the Alabama. But you look go down the list of winners and. There are plenty well, yeah. of notable see, names. We'll play, uh, uh, the, what's the old psychologist thing? You say a name, and I'll give you a. Uh, don't pick pre nineteen seventy four, because uh, I'll be lost. There we go. Uh, Who'd you come up? Oh, with? well, uh, I'll go two thousand and thirteen with the local connections. That uh, Princess of Silmar. Silmar. Yeah, it's Thanko. Uh, that notable there. Um, two thousand eleven, two thousand ten, both big names, notable names. You said 2010. 10, 10 and 11. Two different horses, that was, obviously. Well, yeah, that was the year after Rachel Alexander's three-year-old season. I don't remember. I thought you were going to go back. By the way. Who's 10? Blind Luck, Royal Delta. Um, I have a big problem with Blind Luck, uh, as I can see over there. Um, the, the fact that uh, she gets no love uh, from the Hall of Fame 
if you look at her credentials, first off, she was robbed by awful Eclipse voters for being the two-year-old Philly champion. That was a terrible job by them. She ran the most impressive two-year-old Philly two-turn race of the decade. Um, her battles with uh, Harvard de Grasse, uh, when she lost, she always gave her weight. It's, it, it really goes to show me that there's a group of people who don't watch races and handicap races every day. I'll give you another one. How many horses do you think have won multiple grade ones as a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and a four-year-old and aren't in the Hall of Fame? And by the way, it's not a large group. Oh, I would imagine. They're yeah. sensational horses. I don't know. Two. And Blind Luck is one of them. And it's, it's awful that the other one wasn't. And I'll give you another example to backhand the graded stakes committee. Anytime that Blind Luck and Harvard Grass race, that was a grade one. And one year was a grade two. So people that get books, they go, oh, well, you know, she only won one grade one as a four-year-old, Anthony. Your stats are wrong. No, my stats are right because you're, you're looking at stupid people saying stupid things that it was a grade one race, but you're not paying attention. And that's why I hate the voting because I, I can means test out. Hey, give me some more of them. My I'll, luck I'll, was. I'll, I'll give you one more. One of my favorites, 1993. 1993 was, 92 was November so. So 93 was. Sky Beauty needing up, a, 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 hitching a ride to come home in about 28 seconds for the last quarter mile. Uh, she was for, uh, she was there all to be beat for the Chief. Yeah, for Alan uh, Jerkins. She was there to be had, but the group behind her couldn't have her. Uh, she won that race on all heart. Uh, you know, she was always great in New York. I don't think Mr. Jerkins ever wanted to send her to the Breeders' Cup, but she always got her head handed to her when she went to the Breeders' Cup. Matter of fact, she might have finished god-awful in the 94 at Churchill Downs, maybe like ninth. She was she was toast. She was toast by that. And I'll tell you one thing. I've said this about Sky Beauty, talking about watching races all the time. I don't think she was ever the same after she got sidelined as a two-year-old. Even though her resume looks fantastic, if you were watching the races and paying attention she was dynamic as a two-year-old i think she got injured after the matron which was like the first super saturday one so that was 92 so she didn't make the frisette if my math is right she didn't make the breeders cup but she was awesome as a two-year-old she had a a gear that just ring the neck of her opponents on the turn and I, I thought she was more sensational as a two-year-old uh, than she was the rest. She ended up beating the same horses in New York all the time. And, but in her Alabama, uh, not a scintillating final running time, but she did it all on hard. I mean, Mike Smith just almost carrying her to the line. Uh, I had followed That was Alan. more than you were expecting? I, no, that was uh, from you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 30 I've, years is 30 I've, years. I followed out Alan Jerkins from, from the paddock, and if you remember, at the, along the paddock, you know, the path from the paddock to the track, there used to be a little bar sitting right there at the end of the clubhouse. He went in, calmly got himself a beer, uh, just sat there, drank his beer while they, uh, and then he, he watched the race from right there, and Alan Jerkins being a, an emotional guy. Very often, emotional. Uh, I think people missed he, that about he him. Was, like, he was crying. Uh, tears after yes. the race, and, and I was following him because I was shooting some video, too, and uh, wound up with a little video on the Chris Lincoln uh, show back in the, those days, a little post-race. Want to hear something funny Jerkins, about and, that lineage that mo many people don't know about? They don't have to. Sky, yeah. what, no, Sky Beauty lineage? Well, because she's, right? I don't know. You tell me. That the Phippses very quietly bought a horse, which they're not known for doing, the half, uh, half sister, and I said at the time, she will never race, because if she raced, it would become very public knowledge. She never raced, and she became a broodmare for the Phipps stable. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very good. Very good. What I, no, you didn't go for the, for, especially with Mike, you didn't go to the 70s or 80s for anybody? Uh, you can't get any replays of those. Well, the okay. best one was okay. It's in the Air beating Devona Dale. And that, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's on YouTube because I watch it uh, frequently. The Harborview Farms taking the lead on Devona Dale. And she, and she was never the same, by the way, after coaching Club American Oaks. She was, she was, she was done. She did, though. But she had put a great eight race yeah, yeah, campaign yeah. together. But she was 
toast after uh, the CCA Oaks because she's uh, she won the old yeah, and the, the, old new, the new Philly Triple Tierra. Triple so yeah. uh, a great race. Ten furlongs on the dirt. We stopped running the Breeders' Cup just after, after I think what three runnings at a, at ten furlongs. That was originally yeah, that a ten right. furlong dirt race. Princess Rooney winning by about ten in the inaugural one, but they run nine. But this is their chance. Uh, I think it's fair to say they're never going to do it again on dirt. Yeah, yeah you're probably right. Uh, Unless oftentimes, they run the Breeders' Cup Classic. Oftentimes the Derby is the last for the boys. Uh, the last time any of those will uh, hit the mile and a quarter. So it has become you know, a little bit of an outlier. But uh, coming up today, uh, Clubhouse Race Book, King of the Hill Contest. Uh, swing on by, have a little extra fun. You can watch all the races, obviously, not just from here, but from all the other tracks on a Saturday, and that will include King's Plate up at Woodbine, a great card there. We talked to Keith McCalmont about that. Uh, you know, the King's Plate, some nice undercard stakes uh, this afternoon at Woodbine. Uh, so take advantage of the uh, King of the Hill contest. King of the Hill contest on King's Plate Day. Maybe it'll all work out for you. Clubhouse Racebook, 7-Eleven Central Avenue in Albany. Bounty Bet returns today. Late pick five, the final pick five here at Saratoga is the bounty bet this afternoon. Just play the uh, late pick five with your capital OTV bet account, and you're in for a shot at the bounty. And the uh, pick three bankroll will be tomorrow, but entries are now open. They'll be open through about noontime tomorrow. Go to capitalotv.com. Click on the promotions link. Look for that graphic and uh, click on that. You'll find an entry form for the pick three bankroll. Again, we'll randomly select the team tomorrow. I uh, alluded to it already. Looking forward to uh, a visit from Mike Beach. Uh, talk some Alabama. Uh, Mike Beach, a longtime OTV TV host, and uh, we, you know, when he was on, we heard uh, very often about how the Alabama his favorite race, and thought how appropriate to bring him in on Alabama Day. We will do that. Dylan Davis uh, coming in this morning. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, he has that suit. Oof, for him. He is just uh, he has become the uh, I, I got to get my pin number more than on fire. He's the ATM machine. Uh, with the, the, the ROI he is sporting. Um, and then uh, a little bit later on, John Piasek, a friend uh, that uh, was with the Maryland Horse Breeder, I believe it was the Horse Breeders, um, doing some handicapping down in Mid-Atlantic for uh, Frank Vespi's TheRacingBiz.com. But now he's the man in the booth at Yonkers. But he's in town for the weekend. We'll do a little handicapping with uh, John coming up a little bit later on. All of that, 10 o'clock, race in for us, America. Outstanding. I mean, I... Alabama, though, has a, has a list of horses never to win again, you know. Oh. I'll give you one. Even Mike probably. You remember the last one to go from the Kentucky Oaks to the Alabama? No. It did it successfully. Farta Amiga. Oh, right, right, right. Took all that time off. Very rare. Yeah, no, very rare. We won't have that this year. <laughs> <laughs> it, will, it will last another year. Uh, I think it's time for the Nepalis Chevrolet play of the day. And. Just to f talking about foreshadowing, apparently my favorite word of the day. Um, we're going to have a unique moment that I think we're going to have Titan Titans passing in the night here. So let's uh, roll the DePaula Chevrolet play of the day. The race for savings is going on now at DePaula Chevrolet. Pick your Chevy, pick your payment, and DePaula delivers. Or every Chevy, zero down payment, zero first payment, zero security. So come join the family and thank DePaula for all your automotive needs. Hello, everybody. Kevin Cox, the Brooklyn Cowboy here with your DePaula Play of the Day from beautiful Saratoga Racecourse. We've been giving you our plays of the day on Fridays and Saturdays throughout the meet, and we've been basing our success on a 50 to win, 30 to place, 20 to show wager. And after showing a flat bet profit in our first two years in doing this, we're off to a flying start once again, as we're up about 30% in our bankroll bets for the Capital OTB team, going 9, 3, 4, and 2, and 0 from our nine wages to date. Let's see if we can keep that ball rolling today. Our play of the day this afternoon is in race 11, number one, Yo Daddy. This versatile sort has raced on seven different ovals from 10 starts to date, and that includes three different main track designations and two different turf designations. That's the kind of versatility we like to see in any selection we make. Game Fella has partaken in the Superfecta in his last nine, which bodes well for the type of bet we'll be making for our bankroll team. Colt recently placed in his first start over this course and after a second straight awkward onset, 
blinkers are now added in an effort to give this one a little bit more of an alert beginning. Jockey trainer combo fare better together than apart. And as this one has gone 70, 79, and 90 in the buyer speed figure department in all of his fast track dirt engagements, who knows where the ceiling is in that regards. So once again, our DePaula play of the day at Saratoga Racecourse is in race 11, number one, Yo Daddy. Have a wonderful afternoon at the races, and we'll see you at the track. The race for savings is going on now at DePaula Chevrolet. Pick your Chevy, pick your payment, and DePaula delivers. Or every Chevy, zero down payment, zero first payment, zero security. So come join the family and thank DePaula for all your automotive needs. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you can probably guess the uh, Dark Horse play of the day also might be in race 11 today. But uh, Alabama Stakes Day, I, they don't put it in. And after yesterday, was it yesterday's Dark Horse? I don't know. Yeah, um, I think it was yesterday uh, where I may be against the mile shoot. <laughs> oh, uh, no, another I, barb. It, it was just um, my horse got away horribly and then kind of moved up and got into contention. And I don't know whether the move up took, but that starch yeah, was, was out of that one yes. before they hit the far turn, which was a little early to give it up, even given the situation. <laughs> but it had gotten away badly. So I don't know. Yeah, I can't really blame the I shoot. Have, Just you know, I have watched a few. Of, so. I mean, well, I watched all the head-ons because that's the shot they give you. Uh, and we mostly had field sizes of about six. There hasn't been, I can't yeah. recall, a 10-horse field and. I, I'm telling you, you just get the real feeling that even the, the number six post position, and you try and what the NFL does now is mix in your mind what you saw with the head on, and, and, and I'm shocked sometimes how far behind they are when they make the little click over to the pan shot. You're like, boy, I thought I was more in contention. And, and I was out of the seven, and then you get that's, the bad start out of the seven. And it's dude, like, uh, maybe that's what they're talking about. But like I said, it's taking a lot of bars, but no one's, like, delineated. Yeah. This is I, what I say. But I'm presuming it's the same thing. It's geometry. You, that's you would I have believe. to think. But, I, but yeah. I read the results of the post positions yesterday, and it, it yeah. seemed pretty. But, yeah, I mean, you're on the outside, and you get a little stumble or something. I mean, Jeff Carl what, told me the, you know, great perspective. He's talked about the mile and 16 races at Laurel. And he goes, you know, you enter in like the number eight post. You're like, how do I get over there? You're right on top of it. Yeah. But in the opener, as as has become kind of the norm over the last 20 years, right? A nice two-year-old race on either Travers Day or Alabama Day. I think we looked it up and determined that Uncle Mo is the, you know, high water mark for debuts on on the big days. So uh, we have two-year-old Colts going six in the opener. I had the entry, uh, the one, one uh, a uh, six, seven, and five for me. Sandstone, though, uh, going to be an interesting debut runner for West Point and Company. Shug trains. They paid one point three five million for this horse. Sibling called verifying won the career debut. Sibling called stage left won the career debut. Another sibling t took three starts to win. Ran second, second, and then ripped off uh, a series of victories. But that sibling's name, Midnight Bijou. So I thought breeding that lives up to the price perhaps we'll see if the performance does but the workout at the end of july seems to indicate uh Sanson will be okay uh, the other half of the entry uh has a start under the belt uh you know experience counts there's a couple of uh, win early siblings from that one uh the dam of that one as well so i think both halves of the entry are intriguing but certainly looking forward to seeing the debut from the uh, midnight bijou sibling jonathan's way in the second spot paid over a quarter of a million dollars uh there are some win early siblings. One won the career debut, a couple won in their second start, two more won in their third start. So I thought there was some nice win early. Phil Bauer can train the horses first out. Workouts look okay. So Jonathan's way seems live and social hour. Um, sixth in debut, but did show a little punch. There was a sibling called Dot that won the career debut. So I would not be shocked to see uh, some improvement with the experience now under the belt. The one entry, six, seven, and five. And if Race, it's just going to be fun to see uh, how it all plays out. I, I took a flyer, and I think I'll get better than 6-1 to one off the morning line. 4-8-6 for me and Mikhail making the debut in Austria and McLean's music, going out for our good friend and good Samaritan Mark Henning. <laughs> uh, solid works for the debut. This is not what Mark is known for, but, uh, you know, he has that 8% with that positive ROI, so it's usually a price, and I su suspect 
I'm going to receive better than 6-1. to one. Tiz Freedom making the second career start. I like the debut down at Aqueduct in early July. And then Jonathan's Way, Seth's second pick. Uh, sharp workouts for Phil Bauer, who's having another tremendous meet. Yeah. So it's 4-8-6 uh, for me. Quick question for you. <coughs> Do you like the one? Yes, yeah, Sansom. That's okay. the Midnight B shoe. Because isn't the 7 to 5 being driven by the 1A? N- no. Th- this is a sibling to Midnight B shoe by Uncle Mo, the the West Point runner. Okay. So I think the breeding, uh, the, what they paid for the horse, I think the price is being driven by the, the first time starter. Okay. I would say. I mean, I like the other one too. Yes, and the, I think the, the other number, one's very attractive. The number's solid, and there's breeding there as well. But to me, the 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 one that, if they were separate entries, I think the plain one would be the shorter price. I think. Very interesting. Uh, I ever tell you, I saw Midnight Bizu run early in her career, like the Santa Inez. I went out. Uh, the Rams had a Saturday playoff game. When I bought the ticket, I was like, I'm either going to Santa Inez on Saturday. The Rams play on Sunday. Where I'm going, the Rams lost on Saturday night. I end up at Santa Anita, and Midnight Bizu wins the seven furlong three year old filly before she was Midnight Bizu. <laughs> Mike uh, Smith, I believe, aboard. Uh, and you mentioned Mark Hennig as the Good Samaritan who gave me the ride the, uh, a couple yes. of days ago, the neighborly. Uh, and it, I'm glad you, you mentioned that because it triggered my. I said yesterday I would give one? a shout out to Jeremiah Engelhart. Oh, who my yesterday, goodness, they're yes, falling over themselves. They can't be a ride. Fight you over. Uh, and I, I said, I'll give you a shot. He was laughing because they said, I like the neighborly action uh, because I get too many people just driving by me. One person in the car. But Jeremiah pulled up as I was walking back at the end of the day, yes, right after his stakes went uh, in a, uh, a nice performance. All right, second race. Uh, this afternoon, Maiden Specials, uh, they will go a mile and a 60 on the grass. Boy, what a, tr- tr- you know, people, I think Seth has gotten lost. Many things have changed, but Saratoga used to be about two-year-old racing. I, I, I've said this before. I, I'm very sure this is true. In my lifetime, the hopeful had a bigger purse than the Travers. This is, I'm not going back 100 years, folks. The, the hopeful was... You know, what was the movie? Kentucky, right? It was, or what was the movie, right? Walter Brennan and uh, Clark Gable. Was Clark Gable, yeah. The race was about the hopeful, right? Oh, was it Clark Gable? Wasn't that Saratoga? Saratoga, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It was about the yeah. hopeful uh, race, but uh, two-year-olds in your early daily double. We have six different horses here, which is emblematic. One, five, seven, Asbury Park, an offspring of Frankel going out for Chad Brown. I'm signing up for five to one right now. I rad nice and fresh. You know, it takes from the inside. You give it a go down the road. Concord Green for second. An offspring of Warfront, who has, you know, kind of gotten lost in the into mischief and other runners. But we all remember five, six years ago how, you know, his arc was as a side. And then Royals Proud Pride. I couldn't let an offspring of Dubai. We speaking of Royal Delta, Bessie Lou Stables. No, I forget exactly when they bought her and went to those maroon silks, but 157, Seth has three other opinions. 3, 4, 6, and 10. I thought the 9 was interesting because of Chad and Klarovich. So we have but seven different horses. I, I put uh, policy change on top. Todd Pletcher, runner for Michael Tabor, but with Munnings on top, there's win early on top. Dan produced a sibling called Thrilled that won its career debut. I thought the workouts were okay. I debated making this my dark horse play of the day, in fact. I think though, but... As is indicated by our look, I thought, yeah, I, I, I do like the horse quite a bit, but it's one of those races where it's a two-year-old race at Saratoga. You just don't know. Dragoneer in the second spot. Danny Gargan runner uh, attracted a nice price at uh, Ocala earlier this year. Nice bullet workout on the uh, the first. There's a um, This is uh, the first folder race, so no siblings to look at. McKenzie, we've talked about. Uh, has now become interesting as you a put winner. him over the top. Yeah, and he was interesting before, but we said it was. About, was I think dope. at one point had ten first time starters, no wins, but five seconds and a third. Um, but now has some some first time out winners. Um, but he, so again, he's interesting on top. Dam first of all, but the dam herself was four for six. So um, you know that that was 
intriguing to me on the breeding side for Dragonair. And then Davy Crockett in the third spot, kind of interesting, by Constitution of America's Tale, Davy Crockett. And it goes out for Christophe Clement. Um, and, again, Constitution on top uh, was a little bit attractive. But, as I say, Sam's Rocket, second time for Bill Mott. I think improvement is expected. Chad and Clarvich have valuation metric. Chad with the – Frankel runner oh, from the rail. Is, San Elias is and Peter Brandt, like they need to hook up. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure I didn't look it up, uh, but you can go to Equibase and, and find it. I, I'm, I would guess this has the. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I was going to guess it was a European auction purchase with the breeding, but the breeder is St. Elias. So, um, but uh, again, also intriguing, but I have a 3, 4, 6, and 10. Tremendous early daily double here, folks. We certainly hope Mother Nature appreciates it. On to the third race, three-year-olds and up. Phillies entry-level allowance going six. Seven, two, four, and six. Uh, I'm going to put stop giggling on top. Going out for flying P, J. Provenzano. Had J in a couple of weeks ago, and he had, was off to a great start at the meet, which, um, you know, has continued. His horse is running well. This was one of them going out for Bruce Levine, who he had on loose on the lead. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and this was a nice winner back on July 18th. And at the 8-1 to morning line, I debated making this one my dark horse play of the day because I thought, off of that last win, I, I think this horse is a square fit in here. Now, I, we're getting a price on this one, I think, because Bandita and even Nick Style. Who knows? Both, yeah, exactly. They both have the potential to be special. But we haven't seen Bandita since January of 23. We haven't seen Nick Stiles since December of 23. One goes out for Pletcher. One goes out for Bill Mott. Connections you can trust, certainly. Um, and, and they have both really lightly raced. Bandita, one start. Nick Style two. Both have run, had big efforts that, again, signal they could be special. But off the layoffs, I thought, eh, I'll go with the horse with the, the recency. Stop giggling. Seven, two, four, and 6. Much consternation for me because you just pointed out that the two and the four, how do you with any level of confidence, I don't think we ever know unless they call us up and they don't call me, but, you know, that's, I mean, I expect them to run well in today's day and age. I just, you know, they're racing against each other and, and, and quite frankly, I, I just didn't know which one of the two of those I would take. And I, I just went elsewhere. The, the, the only thing about stop giggling that worries me, this is shocking to me, Seth. Second off this type of layoff for Bruce, zero for 30. That's, that's you know, stats sometimes are not illuminating. Sometimes they are. You just sort of like, you know, because usually, you know, that's an angle that I, I do worry about because of the regression. And that's that's my fear here that maybe I should have flip-flopped my top two because I, I wasn't going to take the two of the four in the win slot. I, I was not. And I probably should have put Girls Weekend in second race off of a big effort. But stop giggling. We'll see if Bruce breaks the zero for 30. Uh, coming off a career best, which couldn't warm up the two horses off the layoff. It's a big mountain. It's a race that, uh, quite frankly, I, I won't have a dollar uh, invested in. But I... I'm also thinking now that as a public handicapper, I, I, I would have better served the audience by flipping the five and the seven. I have no problem with Nick Styles in th Nick style in third and Bandita, you know, it's, you know, could pull, pull an army mule and just win by, you know, run another sensational number and beat everybody. But you're going to take your chances on a very short price and I uh, won't be. And again, you know, either of those could be superstars, and you know, flying Once team again, Bruce probably think, oh, we got we got a nice one in here. Take another Why shot. Um, you know, at a, we're eligible for this non winners of one. But I had Horacio Depaz in yesterday, and he talked about uh, he felt pretty good. He had a horse that was eligible for a non winners of one, and they enter, and then the entries come out, and Ways and Means is in there a few weeks ago. <laughs> He's, uh, I didn't even realize she had a condition left, but that's Saratoga I'll, for I'll you. I'll give you a quick one on that angle and Alabama Day. Flute, after winning the Kentucky oh. Oaks, had a 2X available. And that was her prep for her Alabama. It was, I want to say, one of the first three days of the meet. Can you imagine entering that and you're like, oh, great. <laughs> now i got to run against the Oaks winner. Yeah. Uh, but, again, it's Saratoga. Yeah. All right, uh, Dark Horse play of the day. As we alluded to earlier, yes, I'm in the 11th as well. Uh, kind of 
butting heads with the Cowboy. We'll, we will see how it all works out. On a day where there were a few different horses I could go with, but I wound up my dark horse play in race 11, number four, Who's the King? Going out for Safi Joseph. Beaten favorite last time. If you watch the replay, you see a trouble line in there. Um, steady, impeded. That happens on the clubhouse turn, and that kind of still gets into it, but I think probably took enough starch out of this one that it had a, an impact. Um, as the beaten favorite, you look back and you realize, oh, there are some races just prior, <coughs> you know, fairly recently on the past performances that stack up well here and validated that favoritism last time. I, I think you always have to take an extra look at beaten favorites, and I think this one I think is a square fit. Gets the four hole. We talked a little bit about, you know, the, the shoot uh, earlier. I think the four post position is, is going to be a, a nice, cozy spot for this one. Gaffleone back on board. So, again, it's the beaten favorite. We'll look for who's the king to rebound nicely to, to a better performance that we see uh, just, you know, as they say, recently on the page. And that may, might be good enough in here at a little bit of a price. In the 11th, uh, horse number four, who's the king? Dark horse play of the day. Brought to you by the Dark Horse Mercantile and impressions of Saratoga in downtown Saratoga, both right on Broadway. And again, highly tout you're swinging by and visiting both. You will enjoy it. Plenty to browse around that with. Uh, tell them you saw them mentioned here on OTV TV. Uh, they hear it quite often, as I understand, and we highly tout going down there. Typically open late, so after the races, stop by, grab a little dinner downtown. Thanks to Dark Horse and Impressions for sponsoring the Dark Horse Play of the Day. We'll be right back. For more than four generations, Bruce Cerrone and his family have continued the 102-year tradition of delighting their local following and faithful summer crowd with the finest authentic Italian recipes. Classic Italian dishes made with the freshest ingredients served in a home-like setting. Some things have changed in the last 102 years, but not Pinnell's commitment to the finest in Italian cuisine. Pinnell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga tradition since 1922. 284 Jefferson Street, just minutes from the track. Sometimes it pays to go with the flow, to check your worries at the door, to reconnect with your crew, to follow the thrills and the flavor, to roll with it and see where it takes you, to enjoy every minute to its fullest, and to dance like there's no tomorrow. You can do that here at Rivers Casino and Resort Schenectady, where the good times flow. It only takes one upset to make history, and now you can be part of Saratoga's long tradition at the Dark Horse Mercantile. The Dark Horse Mercantile offers a carefully curated selection of clothing, gifts, and home decor from one-of-a-kind vintage racing memorabilia to select brands like Barber and Under Armour, as well as exclusive Dark Horse branded merchandise. So celebrate the Dark Horse in all of us at the Dark Horse Mercantile downtown Saratoga, where the smart bet is always the Dark Horse. Welcome back to the Handicappers Award on Alabama Day. Nice Saturday morning, and hopefully, you know, it we holds hope. up. It's a little overcast, but otherwise, it's a really nice morning. And, and there is. has been plenty of activity. You know, I drove <laughs> and I had a wager. From, you probably know, 10 horses. Like going the right way, but wait 15 uh, minutes. So, again, we'll keep our fingers crossed because uh, at this point, we're on the turf, and that includes this upcoming fourth race, uh, $40,000 conditional claimers, sprinting five and a half on the grass. Now, I love this race. It, it was perplexing to me, and when you see my picks, uh, I think it's wide, wide open, and I followed my, you know, a cardinal rule of mine is, you know, don't be taking a 5-2 to two shot here. So I am 3-10-9. I think it's wide open. I mean, just I, I just think it's a terrific race on that front, and I'm going back to the fact that River Tay has run well sprinting on the turf, and we get to do it for the first time since the debut. And I'm just, you know, taking a chance. Now, at that time, Wesley Ward put it on debut. Claimed out of that race. Bruce Brown brings it today in a wide open race. Maybe I'm reaching a little bit, but that's what I expect to do here. Peak earnings. First time in for a tag. Sets top pick. Is on the outside. You know, is in the mix. But to me, the mix is very deep. And then six-pack Senorita for Rudy. Trying turf for the first time, I don't have a problem with that. What I like is coming out of starter allowance races. So I like that he's going against what I project as softer, and we'll see. But 3-10-9 in a, what I thought was a very, very intriguing race. 
10, 5, 1, and 9 for me. As you noted, I do have peak earnings on top. It's Chad, it's Klarovich. Now, the last couple do not inspire confidence, but number-wise, they were okay, and we're going from uh, May, uh, from allowance company into a uh, conditional claimer. I think with the class move, of course, it tracks IROD or T's with these connections. 4 to 1 looks generous on this one. I'll put peak earnings on top. Few is the horse that's probably going to attract uh, plenty of attention. Two starts so far, two off-the-turf starts. Um, the debut down at Churchill wasn't much, but then they came up to Saratoga, dropped in for a 50 tag, and won nicely. Uh, it's Brad Cox and company. I was just a little concerned off the maiden breaker. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they got a little more confident and, and uh, you know, shopped for a different spot uh, that was not dangling the horse out there. So at the 40 tag, eh, I became a little bit uh, suspicious, so I, I wasn't pulling the trigger there on top. Beach Cruiser in the uh, third spot, uh, 10 to 1 on the morning line, and I thought the Christoph Clement runner could be a player in here, stepping out of state for an allowance company. And again, that's a class move I really, really like. I debated putting this one on top, and believe me, I will play around with this horse uh, on that class move because it's very potent. Um, so, you know, take an extra look, and I think you will get some value. I have a 10, 5, 1, and 9. On to the fifth, Maiden Clamor is going out of the Wilson shoe. T- top of the page, I have written uh, Head Scratcher. Yes. I wound up I 9, agree. 4, 7, and 3. Safi Joseph just having a good meet. Ken Ramsey owned runner. Lightly raced, comes up from Gulfstream. I think at this 20 tag is going to be a, a pretty square fit. Gaffley owned on board. Um, so, uh, Ramesses, or Ramesses? Uh, on top for me, the number nine. Uh, second spot, Salacious. Um, came up from Florida, Tampa, actually, in April, and then debuted the last day of uh, July here at Saratoga and absolutely clunked, and now they precipitously drop. So it's another one that there's some back class here that this horse may run away with this bunch, but this horse could also wind up way in the back of the pack. I put it down in the second spot on that thought, but again, I could go either way there. McCaw going out for our friend Roddy Valenti, uh, Linda Rice trainee, now in the Linda Rice barn coming up from Churchill. Uh, again, I think probably uh, is going to be a square fit in with this group, 9-4, 7-3. and I have no no feel at, at all for this race, and once again, you know, kudos to the horizontal players that just... I, I'm five seven three, and I, I I don't pick horses for names. But if this horse is named after Mr. Jerkins, even more rooting for. Remember the chief. But on a handicapping angle, the debut was seven eighths on the dirt. I like it. I thought it was a quality effort. That's the race that I'm hanging my hat on in a race that befuddles me. Roddy and Mary Valenti have a call in here. You know, it fits. It's going to be bet. I rad, and then I have uh, Tom Morley's three, but. Five seven three in a race. Would you say head scratch you put yeah. on it? I mean, same, same thing. And and as I said, th- these are the types of races. They don't want to be as you know glory seeking, but these are the type I would love to talk with horizontal players, the people that love horizontals and how they, particularly if they don't have a big opinion, which I think it's a very difficult race to have a big opinion. Like, how do you attack this in the midst of your? campaign to get to the finish line yeah nope. very intriguing to me uh six races this afternoon state bread optional claimer non winners are two other than eight and a half furlongs on the grass uh two seven and six for me and lock and key gets my top pick for jim ryers and i think it has multiple things going for them draws better post position today down inside the same level ran well at eight to one most recently for second let's go big blue george weaver's runner uh you know, right there. I mean, I expect these two. I got. I believe I received a better post position. I have a better price, I believe, and then uh, better lucky than good. Uh, sometimes I believe that, but in the long run, I think I'd rather be good. But uh, two seven six for me. Eight three seven and four. Uh, the six better lucky than good just missed my mix. Going out for Adelphi. Going to try to get Matt. Uh, Tatera in here uh, to talk a little bit. Probably next week is uh, Panda Gate going in the Albany. Um, Don't they but, know about the synergy you, you, you create by coming on? I think they'd be falling all over themselves. Uh, well, I tried to once get, a week. I actually tried to get Matt either today or yesterday, and he said, well, we got the horse. That's, uh, he, he said we have the horse in next week. So I oh. think he's working on the synergy. I think, yeah, I think yes, I think, <laughs> I think the equation's out there. Uh, 
So, again, the six just missed my mix. Yours, I originally hit lock and key. I originally had it okay. and then took completely out. So the, Very again, understandable. Another race where, but 8, 3, 7, and 4, Agent Creed, the Tom Morley runner. I thought this horse would, could be a player in here. Um, comes up from a try down at Monmouth last time. You know, it was okay. Had the lead late and then got caught to be, you know, an okay fourth. Ran a good third before that down at Pimlico. I, I think the horse is, again, decent fit in a bunch that's a little bit of a wide open race and has some ability to, on a better effort, be right in the thick of things. Laurel Value in the second spot it is a uh, Mike Maker runner, Joel Rosario, on board and comes in in very good form and may be the one to catch, and catch me if he can is always uh, an interesting angle. And let's go Big Blue, uh, appropriately named, coming out of August Dawn. And, again, if you don't know, uh, that nom de plume for Bill Parcells, who I think won yesterday, right? Didn't August Dawn have a, a winner yesterday? But George Weaver has this one in good form in the last couple should be a player as well so eight three seven and four. that's coming from a jets fan i'll take a quick break when we come back the pick six will commence at around four o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon Want to get your career in horse racing off to a fast start? Well, the University of Arizona's Racetrack Industry Program is your winning ticket. The Racetrack Industry Program has served as a springboard to some of the industry's most successful individuals with a proven track record of job placement right out of college. If you want to earn a degree in the exciting horse racing industry, the Racetrack Industry Program can put you in the winner's circle. A day at the track isn't complete without a night at the horseshoe. Great food, hot music, and cold drinks. So why go downtown when all the action's just across from the track? The Horseshoe Inn at the corner of Nelson and Gridley. Capital OTV is now streaming live on Roku. The RTN Racing Channel on Roku lets you watch OTB TV live through your Roku device or your Amazon Fire Stick, rather than being limited to computers and mobile devices, which means you can now watch OTB live wherever you are. Simply open Roku, scroll to find the RTN channel, then click on OTB TV. OTB TV on Roku. Try it now. <laughs> the best off television stuff. Uh, the wonderful Mike Veach will be joining us uh, mo momentarily uh, at the top of the hour as uh, his, I presume, favorite horse racing day of the year. Uh, on to the seventh at top of the stretch on the Mellon Turf Course. Uh, optional claimers 2x. Seven, five, eight, and nine uh, for me. I'm going to put Dripping Gold on top. West Point and uh, Shug. West Point and Company and Shug. Uh, again, another one where. I, not jumping off the page at me necessarily, but I thought there was enough there. A best effort puts this one right in the thick of things here. Uh, picks up Frankie DeTore in a race where, again, I could have pointed to, to a couple others and had kind of equal confidence, including Catch a Wave. Lately raced for Chad Brown, Bill Lawrence, so there's some local connections there, but comes in off a nice uh, win down at Belmont at Aqueduct and only the fourth career start. Lifetime best buyer in a series of improving buyers. Could be primed for a good effort this afternoon as well. And Mondigo, Mondego, uh, going out for Christoph Clement. Again, off numbers that are pretty good. Only two starts so far this year. The comebacker was a solid number. Went backwards slightly in the second start. Now third start back, and I think this one becomes a player also. In, uh, yet another intriguing race on the day. Seven, five, eight, and nine. I agree. Uh, I'm five, four, three. Catch, uh, catch a wave. Off of a brilliant uh, 1X, takes runs in this company for the first time. Keep it going for Chad. Freedom Trail, who was last seen in the Hill Prince, lost to Integration, who got run over at the top late in the Arlington Million, and then Lincoln Hawk for a bomb. But what a competitive turf race, 5-4-3. Eighth race this afternoon, allowance on non-winners of one other than going for a mere $110,000 at 9 for a while. Uh, one of my more favorite races of the day, 6, 7, and 10, Rocketeer for Brad Cox. They're adding blinkers, just getting beat. Um, this will be the fourth start of the year. This horse has run consistently well. I could see almost, a, I only need a slight improve uh, or maybe even, you know, staying the same. But we're adding blinkers. I guess we're going to be more on the engine. Game Warden for second, Flying P Stable. Uh, Norm Cassie, they're having a great meet. And then Time Out, who draws the tough 
outside post position for a five to two uh, price, and that just wasn't good enough for me. Six, seven, ten. Now I have to play the triple uh, as we match up here. I'm six, seven, ten, and nine. Um, and I'm in the same boat you are as far as Rocketeer. I think probably has to improve slightly. But for fifth career start, and I thought got some experience last time at the, the nine furlongs, and I think that's beneficial. Had a pretty good try, getting ran a good second, uh, going a mile and an eighth last time. And I think with that one under the belt now, maybe we can expect that just incremental move forward that puts that one right in the thick of things. Six, seven, ten, and nine. All right, on to the ninth race, the uh, second half of the coupling for three-year-old Phillies on the turf. The formerly uh, running nine furlongs as the Najana, but the three-year-old Phillies in the Lake Placid. And I must say, a hearty field in here, which is very nice to see. Absolutely. 7, 10, 5, and 11. Uh, I could point at some others in here. I didn't know Absolutely. what to do with West Point's Euro shipper, the six. So that one could be very dangerous. But I put she she feels pretty on top. Cherie DeVoe with, uh, you know, a good summer so far. And uh, this one coming in off a try in the Belmont Oaks that was very good. Before that, uh, won a stake down at Pimlico. Lightly raced. Again, may still have some upside potential. So I'll go with she feels pretty. But dynamic pricing to me. These two are very similar uh, talent-wise, I think. Irod Ortiz on board for Chad and Klarovich. A uh, little bit of a dud, perhaps, in the Belmont Oaks. I think the horse is better than that. However, I'll look for a rebound. And the horse that's interesting to me in here, and I'll play around with a little bit, going out for Chad and Peter Brandt, Frankie Dottori on board, Spaladay um, coming off a win in a stake down at Monmouth in the latest. Then at 12 to 1 on the morning line, as I say, I'll play around a little bit with the 5, 7, 10, 5, and 11. Uh, you know, for the horizontals, to me, I. I would feel rather comfortable with the 710 moving forward. I talked about how wide open the race is, and, and I think for horizontals, when you get to two horses, that I, I and I'm getting a, a much better price probably on dynamic pricing, uh, who I think had, had no chance the way the race was run. Uh, so to me, sometimes it's not that you draw a red flare through it, but you have to understand positioning, flow of the race, no chance, couldn't do better. Uh, and, and you usually get a better price the next time, which is helpful. She feels pretty, very big efforts. Uh, I actually think the Belmont Oaks, because I would have thought sh she would regress more, but that she held the line pretty well. And then the deuce, the 10 7 2, and I think a fantastic addition of the Lake Placid. All right, we're headed to a break, yes? Yes. That's the game plan. Uh, one more break before we uh, wrap up the show. We'll come back looking at the highlight of the day, the Alabama. Stay tuned. For more than four generations, Bruce Cerrone and his family have continued the 102-year tradition of delighting their local following and faithful summer crowd with the finest authentic Italian recipes. Classic Italian dishes made with the freshest ingredients served in a home-like setting. Some things have changed in the last 102 years, but not Pinnell's commitment to the finest in Italian cuisine. Pinnell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga tradition since 1922. 284 Jefferson Street, just minutes from the track. Sometimes it pays to go with the flow, to check your worries at the door, to reconnect with your crew, to follow the thrills and the flavor, to roll with it and see where it takes you, to enjoy every minute to its fullest, and to dance like there's no tomorrow. You can do that here at Rivers Casino and Resorts Schenectady, where the good times flow. Anything better than watching the races is watching your own racehorse. With nearly 20 years experience in the racing industry, Bonaventure Staples' share-based ownership program enables everyday fans to become part owner of a thoroughbred for far less than you might think. With all the ownership perks at Saratoga, Belmont, Aqueduct, and other great tracks. Experience the thrill and lifestyle of owning your own thoroughbred racehorse. Learn more at BonaventureStables.com. Welcome back to uh, the Handicappers Report on Alabama Day. And up next is the Alabama. It's race number 10 this afternoon. Goes off at about quarter to six. Uh, $600,000 up for grabs for the three-year-old Phillies traveling that classic distance a mile and a quarter. I, I said at the top of the show, I, I think it's wide open. There's a seven to five favorite in here. But remember what I was, I was talking about, you know, who's your Philly for our, our friend Tom Amos? Like, 
There are some times, like the buyer speed figures, they give me some I insight to like, she had never run big ones, and as a function of all the hype she was getting, I was like, that, that's rare. And, and, and Candy, you know, ran brilliantly at Monmouth Park. I mean, maybe. But I don't know if there's enough consistency to say she's not going to run an 89 today. And if she runs an 89 today, isn't everybody in the pool? So I'm 3, 7, 6. Just the angle that Power Squeeze, to me, had no chance in the acorn. And I know this will sound sacrilegious to uh, our, our next... Uh, Mike Veach, who I have the utmost respect for. But I'm not so sure the Acorn this year wasn't a tougher race. You know, the, the Beast was in there, and Leslie Rose was pretty good. So I, I think it's a m much more wide-open race than a 7-5 to five favorite. That, that's what I'll say. I think there are high quality behind uh, the champ, but Miss Justify, to me, is completely in the mix. Neon Icon was going to be a big price. I see no reason. Intricate from the inside. I mean... It's a terrific horse race, and I'm going to take Power Squeeze, who has to run the race of her life, to win. Um, I, I went with Candy. I said earlier when we were talking yes. about it, you know, gets away from Torpedo in, and I thought in the Coaching Club American Oaks it was a good second, but was against currently and, and likely the the three year old Philly champion. So I thought it was a pretty good second. Um, I think is you know off of that race set up nicely and here to live up to it. But I I do think. For me, Miss Justify is right, right in the ballpark. Yes. I think that prep in the Wilton was a nice race, and off of that, I think for yeah, Todd the Wilton Fletcher. Yeah, giving us the Alabama winner two years in a row. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that would be wild. Um, but I think she's good. And then I put Power Squeeze down in the third spot. Um, you know, had a, a four-race win, win streak snapped running behind Torpedo Anna twice and then gets away from Torpedo Anna and puts in another win. So... Uh, she is very intriguing also, but for me, seven, six, three, and two. On to 11, starter allowance going out, coming out of the Wilson shoot. Four, ten, seven, and five. I thought the three was also a little bit interesting <laughs> for Linda Rice. In the uh, same ballpark. So, uh, again, I talked about this one earlier. Who's the king is my dark horse play of the day. And I thought, you know, beaten favorite with a legit, it, you know, it happened early in the race, and the horse had some opportunities to, to play into the race subsequently, but I do, do think it, it it's a legit, uh, you know, if you'll go back and watch on the clubhouse turn, clearly there there is some, you know, gets jammed up a little bit. So I'll look for this one to rebound and, and live up to that beaten favorite uh, status last time at a little bit of a better price today. Second slot, we'll take a look at number 10, Pursuit of Power, uh, Steve Asmus and Trainee. Now, this is, you start to get out here, uh, the 10, what we said yesterday, when, wasn't it 8, 9, 10 had not won uh, when I read like, off those yeah, stats? Yeah. Um, so uh, up against it a little bit uh, with the situation out of the shoot. And then unlimited potential. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting horse to watch this afternoon because Pletcher and Rapoli uh, bought this horse um, back in 2021 for $750,000. Didn't quite live up to the program. They dropped the horse in for sixteen dollars uh, last time. And our friends at America's Pastime and, and company jumped in and picked up this horse for sixteen, dollars off a huge win with a 92 buyer. Uh, this could be a very clever claim, and we'll find out more about that this afternoon. But 4, 10, 7, and 5. I'm right in the ballpark. Seth mentioned the three for his fourth. I'm 4, 3, 7. Uh, who's the king to me is... The type of horse is a beaten favorite that I like coming back at a better price. So, Yo Daddy adds blinkers, uh, draws inside a repeat of the last starter allowance race. And then, as you said, I think we talked about a limited potential. Was that the one that I, I think I was shocked that only five went in for it? I thought there'd be 35. Oh, right. So. Uh -oh. And America's pastime, I think we're happy with it. And, I mean, the, yes. and, the, and the number comes out. And you come out of that race, you get to run in these races. Yeah, exactly. Where typically it's a big jump, and I think the two L's have a hard time. But this was a horse that many people thought had a lot of game. Yeah. Last uh, one. Finale today goes off about 6.50, 12th uh, state bred maidens going five and a half on the grass. 8.63 for me here uh, in the finale, as Seth mentioned, about 10 of seven. And barefoot disco. I like very much, uh, at the end of the day, second start off of a nearly year layoff. I, I think that was, for Charlie Baker, just everything I needed. And I get him down the road. Naughty uh, Destiny, Christophe Clement's runner, making the first start since the Stallion Series. is going to be tough in here, back with Maidens. And then Heart of the Night, 
for Horatio DePaz, who was on yesterday. But I, I very much, you don't have it in the mix, so there you go. Barefoot Disco I like very much today in the finale. 6, 3, 11, and 5. Uh, Naughty Destiny on top for Christoph Clement stepping out of a New York Stallion try uh, back in the middle of June, New York Stallion series. Uh, I think it's going to fit nicely with this group. Second spot, Heart of the Night, going out for Horatio DePaz, who, again, having a very nice meet. Uh, had him in, you know, yesterday off of the stakes win earlier this week. Um, but comes in in good form. Makes a lot of sense. Maybe the one to beat. If Long-Legged Queen sneaks in, uh, take a look at that one off the, the right, the run-up at Finger Lakes. Owned by my friend Jim Doyle. I mentioned shooting video of Alan Jerkins with Sky Beauty. And I used to run around, and, and Jim uh, was also running around with me back in those days doing a little video. Now a lawyer and a... Uh, breeder and owner, uh, certainly rooting for that one, but I think legit off of the race at Finger Lakes. And speaking of rooting for, rooting for our friends at Bonaventure with Beautiful Thief, uh, the Belmont at Saratoga meet ran very well. And late in the race, I thought they're going to get the win with this debut runner, and then just got a little tired and came up a little bit short. But off of that one, Beautiful Thief for uh, Dan Collins and Bonaventure, intriguing as well. 12th and final, 6 3, 11 and 5. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. He stays up next. Mike Beach will be joining us on Alabama Stakes Day. Have a wonderful day. This has been the Handicappers Report, brought to you by Capital OTB 